Hi guys, I'm James and today I'm going to talk about trace elements. There are seven essential trace elements for plant nutrition and I certainly don't have time to cover all seven of them today. So let's cover the two trace elements I continue seeing deficient for livestock producers. Copper and molybdenum or molly. We'll start with copper. Copper is normally forgotten about until problems of deficiencies become noticeable. By then it can be severe on your livestock returns. Copper being a micronutrient is required in smaller quantities than major nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus, but it is required in large amounts when compared to other trace elements. Copper is essential for plant growth and more importantly livestock production. It has many functions within the plant and animal. For plants it's necessary for chlorophyll, pollen formation, and fertilisation in the reproductive stage of the plant's life cycle. And it helps with the physical strength of plant stems and shoots. It also improves the resistance of fungal diseases. Copper deficiency is not normally identified in pasture plants. This is because livestock have higher requirements for copper than plants. So cattle and sheep are affected by copper deficiency at a level that does not affect the plants. Meat and Livestock Australia, MLA, estimates copper deficiency could be costing southern Australian sheep producers $15 million a year. Symptoms of animal deficiency are steely wool and loss of crimp, a loss of fertility, anemia, which is a reduction in red blood cells, or a nervous disorder in lambs, which is called swayback, which indicates a deficiency during pregnancy. Even if you think you're not in a copper deficient area, if you're a livestock producer who has or is improving the productivity of pastures, you must be mindful of the combative relationship that copper has with other nutrients. Elements such as sulphur, moly and iron can influence the availability of copper in your soils. Even nitrogen applications can induce copper deficiency in the plant. So what is the best way of finding out our copper levels? Well, the MLA report that I mentioned earlier found that tissue testing your pastures can provide an accurate indication of your animal copper status on farm. Tissue testing should be done late winter, early spring. Also, choose a lab that is ASPAC and NADA accredited. Nutrient advantage, of course. Soil testing for copper will give you a range, but it does not provide a true indication of copper levels. Blood testing should not be the primary method of measuring copper in the animal. A liver test is a lot more accurate than blood, as it reflects copper intake over weeks as opposed to days with bloods. Obviously there are limitations taking liver samples and biopsies. Okay, so that's enough on copper. The second trace element I'm covering is molybdenum, also known as moly. Moly is required in very small amounts, even when compared to copper, but its deficiency can have a major impact on plant growth. Molly deficiency normally occurs on acidic soils and in high rainfall zones. Molly is important in all plant species and not just legumes for the efficient use of nitrates. In that, its main role is nitrogen metabolism, converting nitrogen into amino acids. So when a plant is molly deficient, its appearance is very similar to nitrogen deficiency. Legumes such as clovers, and lucerne are often affected by moly deficiency more so than grasses. The rhizobia bacteria associated with legumes require moly in greater quantities. The rhizobia bacteria requires moly for end fixation in the root nodules. Moly deficiency does not restrict the initiation of nodules on legume roots, but it does affect the functioning of the nodules. When nodules are healthy, they will have a red pigment and be pink in colour. Molly can also affect pollen formation, poor or delayed flowering, which in turn can reduce the viability of seeds. When you increase the soil pH and phosphate status of your soil, in turn you increase the uptake of molly. It is extremely difficult to accurately measure soil molly levels. Given the small total amounts of molly in the soil and even smaller amounts applied, there is little or no Australian data for testing soil molly. As mentioned earlier, make sure your lab is fully accredited. Nutrient Advantage is the best one that comes to mind. Again, like copper tissue testing, 
is the recommended method to determine moly requirements needed. Tissue testing is a lot more reliable than soil tests. Critical levels of moly in plant tissue samples vary depending on the species, so it's best to keep different pasture species separate. For example, a tissue test of straight clover is best and try not to contaminate with the perennial grass species in the pasture. With current beef and lamb prices, it's a big gamble to forget about your trace elements for another year. Talk to your local agronomist and get your soil and tissue testing organised for this coming spring. Here's hoping for a wet one. All the best for the business end of the season.